Mulder. Mulder, we pulled something off that videotape you found in Scully's room. What is it? Something interesting. But we don't want to talk about it over the phone. Big Brother may be listening. Here's the tape Scully was reviewing last night. We scanned samples of the tape onto disk. Digitized it. Using some interpolating freeware we pulled out off the net, we were able to blank out the visible frames. What am I looking at? Well, this is the actual signal your cable trap device was emitting. Of course, we slowed it down significantly. It's designed to cycle at 15 flashes per second to induce what's known as the photic driving response. Bring it home, boys. This device is stimulating electrical activity in the brain. Studies into subliminal influence have shown a correlation between heightened suggestibility and the manipulation of this response. Mind control? 57 channels of it. Tachistoscopic images, like they used to sell popcorn at the movies. Both Russian and American scientists have been working with them for decades. Not to mention Madison Avenue. The naked lady in the ice cube. Ah, oh, one of my personal favorites. Why wasn't I affected? That's the one thing we haven't figured out yet. This uh, subliminal signal, could color be a factor in it? Maybe. I'm red, green, colorblind. His inability to perceive the color red could render him immune to the psychotropic effects. But why design a color-dependent signal? Why not? Red, green, colorblind... Mulder. ...is only a small percentage of the male population. Which still leaves the vast majority of the American public vulnerable to its effects. I'll be right there. What happened? The flicker rate on the television is very, very important. It was timed to be so many cycles per second, and, and it actually just meets with the brain patterns for an alpha state. Our, when our brain sees it through our eyes, we, st we start to adopt that flicker rate in our, in our mind, and we go into a deep alpha state. Watch children and watch their mouths. They, they drop open. Uh, they won't hear their parents talking. Uh, they're, they're hypnotized, in fact. Uh, why would they give that particular flicker rate when they could have chosen a, a, a whole variety of flicker rates? It wasn't an essential thing to have. So it was done for a purpose. It was meant to be hypnotic. It was meant to be used as a tool of propaganda and indoctrination, uh, even through the guise of entertainment and so on. It also was to create a new society because they were the avant-garde as I say, leading the sexual revolution through drama, through little documentaries, um, fiction, non-fiction, all combines. Once again, back to Plato, the audience see what they see. Uh, you understand that it's even worked out towards different age groups. There's something on for everybody, everybody's age group. Each age group is actually being updated as well, even the elderly ones, into new ways of thinking or seeing things. But the target mainly was for youngsters if we take one of the world's experts on propaganda, who was Jax um, uh, Elal, who wrote extensively on how the mind works and how all entertainment, he said, that has to do with government programs such as police, detective stories, detective series, which contain little human dramas to, as the hook that you identify with to make you watch the whole story. A child gets kidnapped, Detective goes on a hunt. He goes through hell and, and what fire uh, to get that child back. Um, you identify with the hero for, if you're a male. You identify with the heroine if you're female. And that's the hook to get you to watch them. But what he said was all dramas to do with police or even the military in movies are pure propaganda. Pure propaganda. The human story is just the, the bait to make you watch through it, to get you to identify with it. Because once again, there's always a message left somewhere in the movie. It might even be a message that's against your own morality. It could be where the cop, for instance, um, uh, does uh, sleep with this beautiful woman while his wife is at home, and it's all part of the story, and even tell you why he did this, he was feeling down that day, blah, blah, blah. And so you've just again altered your viewpoints on how you yourself might behave in that situation. And that sometimes that, can, that kind of thing can be justified. That's how you're downloaded through entertainment. It's there to alter and direct 
and always upgrade into another step of the direction but the entire culture for someone else's purpose. Let's talk about the effects of the Alpha State first of all. Recent articles I've even read on the air from various science uh, studies show you that, that even when you switch off television you remain in that alpha state for maybe 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer, depending on how long you've been watching it. With high definition, it's, again, why, uh, why would a president of a country mandate that all TVs had to go high definition? Is it because he really cares so much about your happiness? And he wants better quality for you? Or is there another reason for it? Well, I'm sure the, f the effects of the old flicker rates and, and what, what it did will also be incorporated in high definition, but with even more uh, added benefits for bringing you into a complete hypnotic state. How do you wake someone up who's addicted to television? Uh, you can't. Very, very simple. You can't get your daily brainwashing. Uh, we're literally it's bypassing uh, any consciousness in the person. You can't take that every day and still try to wake up and learn at the same time. Uh, I've known people who've gone through complete withdrawal from television and gone into depressions because their, their entire routine is, is, is broken. They also have time on their hands, uh, which is a big aspect of control, remember, too. Uh, if you can take time away from a person who can think for themselves, who might say, well, I'll go and read a book, I'll go and study something, or if you can take that time away from them and have them mesmerized in front of a television set, then you'll keep them dumb, stupid, compliant, and, and going along with the system. I always advise to people, if you know someone who's watching TV, um, it's quite simple to find out where they are mentally, uh, psychologically, uh, in, the, in the understanding of things. You can ask them a few simple questions. If they give you standard television answers, uh, forget it. Simple as that, forget it. If, if you see some spark of, of their own opinion coming in, there's maybe a chance you can do something with them. But uh, you cannot get a... You see, television um, it can be classified as a drug. First order of business for a propagandist or an advertiser is to create the circumstances that will induce a state of mind that is favorable to the reception of their message. And that state of mind is the hypnotic state of mind, making television extremely important in this whole process of creating a, a unified mindset among the entire population.